Now I have built the geometry for this model. In the next step, I'll, I am going to assign the boundary condition, which means the loads, uh, the domain boundary conditions, and the settings necessary for the analysis, for example, the simulation time, and also the, the mesh size and the different type of outputs I want out of this model. So let's start with the, the loads. So the electrodes around this PZT. So first of all, um, let's go into forcing function and let's add a time function. So I am choosing a Ricoh wavelet type of time function input, because if I were to draw that in the frequency domain, this has a rather large frequency band. So it allows me to uh, analyze the response to a lot of frequencies at the same time. So let's just insert that, and this will appear in the walk tree here. Once I have it, um, before actually creating the electrodes, uh, it's wiser to have a look at the mesh. So let's take a look at the mesh configuration. And right now, a certain medium size of 0 3 millimeter has been chosen. So to visualize that, uh, we ha can go in model graphics, show approximate meshing, and then it, the mesh would look like that. So it's way too coarse. And we see that in between, you know, um, you have to draw some lines basically to make sure that your mesh also, uh, the boundary goes at the right uh, boundary with your transducer. So for that, we'll use key points. So first thing is to switch that to wavelength base. And I want 15 elements per wavelength. So the, it's automatically calculated and gives you a mesh size of around this order. Um, now let's define a few key points in this direction. So for that, open the key point and in Y direction, let's click on the plus. And in X direction, I will need one at 10 millimeter. So you see a line start to be drawn here. So to um, notify that there will be a key point insert in here. And in Y direction, I need one at uh, at five, one at seven, and one at 7.634, which are the diamond, the geometry dimension of my transducer in each layer. Okay, so um, in the preview, you do not see the mesh size uh, changing, but actually what happens in reality is that the, the mesh of the grid will automatically be uh, be resized so that those lines that you draw in the key point will be on the on the will have some nodes over it. This is important. Okay, um, let's reset the view. Let's use this one. Yeah, okay, this is good. Okay, now I have my model, my mesh is set up. And now let's assign the electrodes around the PZT. So for that, go on the loads, click on the plus, and let's assign it to, rather than using edges, uh, it's much better to use geometry interface. Uh, the code generated, in the analyst will be cleaner if you use geometry interface. So it's better to use that. Um, and let's click on, if you click on PZT and then this, it will automatically select the right interface. So here, my electrode will be generated in between uh, and associated to the nodes in between those two materials. And here I want a voltage type of loads and this, here I assign my uh, time function that I created. Let's create my load. And let's create a second load in between the PZT and the backing. This will be a voltage, but this time this will be ground. Okay, got that. So those two loads have been created. You can go in the properties here and set up some parameters. So here, uh, we have nothing really to change here. Um, maybe the area scaling, let's put that to one. So because this is, yeah, this is axisymmetric model. And, 
Okay, and now the next step is to change the domain boundaries. So let's open the domain boundaries. And this is axis symmetric model. So the, the X minimum boundary should be set up to symmetry and all the others will be set up to absorbing. Absorbing and the last one will be absorbing as well. Right. And this should be okay. And now let's set up the parameters for the analysis. So here, the only thing we have to change basically is the, the simulation time that it will take, which is around two, two minus five. So this is in, in seconds, right? So this will be around uh, 20 microseconds, if I am not wrong. Um, and now in the outputs, so I want basically to be able to um, to get what that I sh the values I showed to you in the beginning, um, the radial plots, the TVR values. So this is obtained using something called extrapolation. So because to obtain this uh, the generated beam by the beam generated by the this transducer, I actually do need a much larger field than just this amount of water. So instead of simulating a very big mole, uh, I can use what's called extrapolation. So for that, there is a special type of boundary called, uh, so it's not a boundary, it's an output, sorry, uh, called extrapolation data. And the way to uh, assign this is to, is to basically, is to define a cutting plane on a certain axis, so here in Y axis, and I have to put the cutting plane outside of my transducer, so it should be located inside the water. Uh, the cutting plane can cannot be assigned uh, either on the boundary or in the PZT material, otherwise you'll get an error. So let's choose 8.5 millimeter, for example. So here we see the line, the cutting line is in the water, so it's okay for my uh, transducer. Um, now I want to also get, um, let's say, I would like to see also the maximum acoustic pressure. So this is field data, acoustic pressure maximum. So I want to see how it looks like. Um, and let's say that will be all for this analysis. So just say that. And now I'm ready to run this model on the cloud.